A potentially meta-shifting update and a raft of huge transfer stories are what we have to talk to you about this week. My name is King Demps, I'm on location in Copenhagen. Let's get down to another episode of HLTVP. We'll kick things off with the major update that came through for CSGO this week. With Anubis replacing Dust2 in the active duty map pool, the Orbs magazine size being reduced from 10 to 5, and the M4A1S having its damage nerfed at long ranges. The incoming map Anubis was first added to the game in 2020 and has since undergone extensive changes to its layout. The map took the place of Dust2 in the pool, which itself was already removed once in 2017 to undergo a rework. The change caused mixed reactions from the community, with many calling for Vertigo, Mirage or Overpass to be removed instead. However, it's early days yet to take too many of these reactions seriously, as the map hasn't yet seen any professional play. The A1S changes were largely received positively, as the previous nerf in June that nerfed the magazine size did little to change the fact that many saw the weapon as overpowered. The AWP change is only the second update that the Sniper has received since 2015, with both of the previous changes relating to movement speed while using the weapon. The general consensus is that this won't have a huge effect on the very top AWPers, but again, as with the other changes, time will tell. Have you had a chance to play the new update yet? And if so, what did you think? Another bit of interesting news came from Valve this week as they announced that the qualification routes for the majors will change ahead of the Blast Paris major to be hosted next year. Details are scarce at the moment, but it was said that certain teams will be able to skip the open qualifiers based on the performance at Valve sanctioned and select third party events. They will then meet those who did progress through the open system in a closed qualifier. We'll update you on this one as we learn more. Next, we have the roster news, and by far the biggest news to come out this week was that Kenny S left G2 after almost six years with the organization to sign for French side Falcons. The 27-year-old sniper had been benched by G2 in early 2021 after a poor run of form and spent 18 months on the inactive roster. He did make a few cameos from the bench, however, most notably at IEM Winter 2021. He had originally joined G2 as part of a so-called French super team alongside NBK Shocks and Apex, and the team did win several events during their tenure. However, their best performance at a major was only a quarter-finals finish at the E-League Major 2018. Now, Kenny S replaces Maka on Falcons following the team's failure to qualify for the IEM Rio Major. Kenny will also reunite with NBK on Falcons, a player that he won a major with back in 2015. Do you think Kenny S has a chance to recapture the glory of the old days? Let us know what you think in the comments. In other news, Major has returned to eternal fire as the Turkish super team have finally, well, maybe brought to an end their rebuild that began after their dismal performance at the IEM Road to Rio Europe RMR. We have already brought you the news of the Eternal Fire move so far, which have been coming thick and fast since the RMR, but really they began back in July when Calyx was first removed from the team. One of HLTV's own, Striker, summarised the saga in this tweet, and as you can see, it's been a bit of a wild ride. As part of the latest change, Major will take over the reins as in-game leader, whilst Emor will move to the main AWP role. Now for some quick fire changes, and the first of which sees Oscar depart from Titans, having achieved very, very little with the MSL-led squad, and calling it a wasted year. Attacker has replaced Aristo on Tai Lu, less than two months after Aristo replaced Attacker in September five head roster moves from Tai Lu. And Ecstatic have signed a new AWPA in the form of Salazar, not long after Berza was benched following the team's IEM Rotorio Europe RMR campaign. 
Next up, we have the event news and the Elisa Masters Espoo, a LAN event in Finland which featured a range of top 10 to top 20 teams, concluded on Sunday, with Fnatic taking home the trophy and $100,000. The spectacle put on by Elisa was spectacular, with many praising the production and the crowd in attendance. However, it was a tournament of stand-ins, as Astralis, Big and Fnatic all attended without their full lineup. Sprout even had to sub in Berry for the first match of their semi-final, as Laux was struggling with an illness. Ultimately, it was the European mix Fnatic who secured the title after drubbing Big 2-0 in the grand final. Their academy player who was standing in, Pepsor, impressed throughout the event, posting a 1.16 average rating. The WePlay Academy League has a new champion in the form of Young Ninjas, who defeated Spirit Academy in the grand final. Spirit Academy seemed like shoe-ins to take the title after an early win in the playoff bracket over the Ninjas. However, the latter recovered to beat Na'Vi Jr. in the lower bracket and eventually defeated Spirit Academy 2-1 to secure their first ever WePlay Academy League title. Red Bull Flick 2v2 Copenhagen also took place over the weekend, with the event pitting amateur duos against professionals with €20,000 going to the winner. It was the amateurs who reigned supreme at the event, with Juho and Putelli of Finland defeating Magics and Wonderful of Team Spirit on their way to securing the title. And in our final piece of news, the Blast Fall Finals kicks off this weekend, with eight top-tier teams set to do battle for the lion's share of a $425,000 prize pool and a spot at the Blast World Final in December. Teams like Na'Vi, FaZe, Liquid and NIP have the chance to redeem themselves after disappointing performances in Rio, whilst G2 have a chance to put the demons of not even qualifying for the major to bed in Copenhagen. For more information, check out the viewer's guide that we have put together on HLTV. A link for that will be in the description. Remember, for more information about everything I have spoken about in this week's episode, head over to hltv.org. We have tons of content from all of the events that went down. Make sure you check that out. As always, remember to re-peak in a week for another episode. And until then, bye for now.